In this lecture, we will talk about defect, root cause, and effect. The learning objective here is to distinguish between the root cause of a defect and its effects. This topic is marked as K2. Let's first see, what is a root cause? A root cause is defined as the earliest actions or conditions that contributed to creating the defects. This means that when you find a defect, you also have to find the first condition that caused the defect. We will see an example of root cause analysis to understand this definition. Suppose we get this requirement. Once the speed is more than 115 km per hour, red light shall glow. The speed needs to be more than 115 km per hour. After getting this feature, customers are unhappy. Because the customer checked this device and observed that there is a defect. Why? Because when he kept the speed to 116, he expected the red light to be on, but he found that it's still off. Now, to figure out why this is a defect, we have to do a root cause analysis. We are in the testing stage now, but we have to go back a step to the implementation stage or coding stage. Here we find that there is a condition that was implemented incorrectly. If speed is equal to or greater than 150 instead of 115. However, our job is not yet done. Remember, we have to find the earliest condition. This means that we have to go one stage back again, which means the requirement or design stage. In this stage, we found that some of the developers have written this system requirement. Red light should glow when speed is more than 150. So, instead of 115, the requirement engineer wrote 150. And because of this, the implementation was done incorrectly, and we found the defect in the coding and customer saw failure. However, our job is not yet done. We have to find the earliest condition. When we investigated more, it was found that since the communication was verbal, this problem occurred. Now comes the point which you need to understand. Your job is to identify effect, failure, fault, or root cause. The customer being unhappy is an effect. Observation made by the customer is a failure. These two statements are defects. And all these problems occurred due to miscommunication. So this is the root cause. We don't stop at this point. Now we need to find the solution to avoid such problems. So action over here is further communication will be done via email. With this, example one ends. Now we will see one more example to understand the root cause analysis topic. Here is the life cycle of defect root cause analysis. This life cycle starts with a customer complaint which is also the effect. Why is he complaining? Because he has come across a failure. He has received incorrect interest payment calculations. So, the customer is trying to calculate his interests, but received an incorrect result. This was a failure. When we analyze this failure, we find that it was caused by a single line of incorrect code. When we further investigate this defect, we find out that the wrong code was written because the product author misunderstood how to calculate interest. This was the root cause of the defect that made the customer complain. So we have this information. The product owner didn't know how to calculate interest. But we can't stop there. We have an entire team. So how is it that the product owner could make this mistake? What we do next is called action. We figure out what to do so this never happens again. We train the product owner and other team members in interest calculation. This way they will not repeat this mistake. So now you see how everything is connected. This is how root cause analysis works. It starts from an effect, that is the complaint, and ends with an action. That is our method to correct the root cause. Now we'll look at why we need to do a root cause analysis. The first point is to prevent a significant number of future defects from being introduced. 
We want to make sure that new defects don't creep up in the future. The second point is to reduce the occurrence of similar defects in the future. The third point is to improve the process. Let's summarize the lecture. First, we covered the definition of root cause. Root cause is the earliest actions or conditions that contributed to creating the defects. Then, we saw the need of root cause analysis. To prevent a significant number of future defects from being introduced, we want to make sure that new defects don't creep up in the future. To reduce occurrence of similar defects in the future. To improve the process.